Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. We all know the hot news recently is the Xiaomi Mi 11 and the Snapdragon 888. After all, it will be the most popular Android flagship SoC next year. Oh, I mean this year. And of course, I tried my best to get this device as fast as possible, although I had to source it from China and pay a hefty shipping and import fee. But I just wanted to test this as soon as possible and give you the results because I know all of you are just waiting. So if you have seen my unboxing video and some previous testing videos, you've known this is the Xiaomi Mi 11 with Snapdragon 888. And of course, I have the Xiaomi Mi 20 Pro with Snapdragon 865 here. And also the Huawei Mate 40 Pro with the newest Kyren 9000. But from my testing, I was actually very disappointed with how the Snapdragon 888 performs. Why am I disappointed? Why is Snapdragon 888 a bad SoC or a failed SoC? Why would I say that Qualcomm never delivered what they promised? I think it's quite hard to answer all these questions from my normal gaming FPS test. Because I think we need a more rigorous, more scientific, and more systematic test to show you what I mean. So this test will not be about FPS, about uh, uh, battery life, how many hours of battery life, whether the game is smooth or not. Uh, can you run PUBG at HDR settings? Uh, does it run Genshin Impact smoothly? No, that are just hand waving. And people will question, they will say, oh, uh, it's about the display resolution. Uh, oh, it's about optimization. So I want to isolate all this and let the numbers talk. You might be confused about what I mean, but never mind. Let me show you. So without further ado, let's start our test. So the first test we are going to run is Geekbench 5. And no, it's not like your uh, Geekbench 5 benchmarks you see all day. This time, we are also going to record the power consumption of the device while running Geekbench 5. Furthermore, I want to make the results more accurate and representative of the SoC itself instead of the device. So I will actually uh, leave the device idle for one minute and record the idle power consumption first. Then when we run the benchmark and record the active power consumption, we can actually subtract the idle power consumption to know roughly what is the real power consumption of the SoC itself. And as we talk, we can see that this Xiaomi Mi 11 has been idle for about one minute and we know that the idle power is around 1.3 watt. Now let's start to run the benchmark. Now the benchmark has finished, and let's take a look at the power record. We can see that there are about two parts to this power record. The first half has a bit lower power consumption, and the second half has a bit higher power consumption. This makes sense is because Geekbench 5 actually run the single core benchmark first, and then multi-core benchmark later. Now let's look at the data from the single core benchmark and multi core benchmark separately. So let's look at the single core part first. We see that the average power is around 3.1 watt and subtract the idle power we just got. We know that the average single core power consumption is about 1.8 watt. Uh, but I need to give a disclaimer here because this number is not 100% accurate. That's because Geekbench 5 actually performs the test uh, at intervals, so the core is not working 100% of the time. Nevertheless, I think the average power consumption is still uh, meaningful when we compare it across different SoCs. From here, we also see that the single core power consumption at its peak is about 5.9 watts. So subtract the idle, we get about 4.6 watts. Next, we look at the multi-core part in the same way. We see that the average power consumption is about 6.4 watts. Subtract idle, we got about 5.1 watt. And then similarly, the peak is around uh, 8.6 watt. 
Okay, that's it for the Geekbench 5 for Snapdragon 888. And you should have already understood how I am going to do all these tests. Next, I'll follow the same way to test out the Snapdragon 865 and the Kirin 9000. And I won't explain this uh, methods all over again. Uh, instead, I'll just show the footage and show the numbers on the screen, alright? But of course, you don't have to worry about remembering all these numbers. At the end, I'll actually uh, consolidate all the data into an Excel form and uh, make some uh, in-depth analysis with you, right? So now I've done the Geekbench test on all three devices. I have consolidated all the data I've gathered here. And I've also done some simple calculations to actually derive the score per watt number, which is also known as the energy efficiency. And I also added color code to let you know uh, how well or how badly the, the SOC performs. So green color means it's the best of all three. Yellow means it's the second, and the red means it's the worst. And now it's very easy for you to tell what's the problem with the Snapdragon 888. So it has two green boxes, which are the performance. The single core and multi core performance are both the best of the class, right? But it also have has four red boxes, which is power consumption and score per watt or energy efficiency. That means the Snapdragon 888 has the best performance but the worst power efficiency and the worst power consumption. And for this CPU part, I think the Kyrene 9000 is actually the best balance here. Because if you, if you see the Snapdragon 865, apparently the performance is too far behind the uh, newer SOCs. Uh, so the Kyrene 9000 actually achieves a performance which is very close to that of Snapdragon 888 while it still has very good power efficiency. But we also have to know that the Snapdragon 865 is almost one year old, right? It's the previous generation flagship SoC. So I think it's still holding up pretty well here. So the only loser is the Snapdragon 888. Okay, now let's use the Manhattan 3.1 test in GFX Bench to test out the GPU performance and power efficiency and power consumption using very similar way. I think this also does not need much explanation. I will just play the footage and display the results. Okay, now we finish the test and we add the data to our Excel form. We have three more rows. Now if you look at the pure performance, the Snapdragon 888 and Kyrene 9000 are both very good. Uh, apparently they beat the Snapdragon 865 by a large margin. However, did you notice that the Snapdragon 865 is so so power efficient? 
it uses only half the power of the Kyren 9000 and even less than half of the power of the Snapdragon 888. So its power efficiency is much much better than that of the Snapdragon 888 and Kyren 9000. So I want you to think about this. Is it really that meaningful to have this uh, high performance while your power figures shoot through the roof? Okay, now let me show you more other tests. Uh, let's do Antutu first. I think we are all quite familiar with Antutu. So this benchmark actually covers CPU, GPU, RAM, and disk, almost everything in your a smartphone. Now they have done the Antutu benchmark, and let's just take a look at the result. I think the score uh, we are all familiar with, we see the leaks, we see all the reviews. So that's not interesting to us. What is interesting to us is the battery and temperature figures. So do you notice that the temperature rise for the Snapdragon 888 is actually 12 degrees, which is much higher than the other two. All three devices start with a battery temperature of around 31 or 32 degrees, and the Snapdragon 88 actually reaches 44 by the end of the test. Also notice that the Snapdragon 888 use 5% of battery, while the other two use less than it. So you see this corresponds to our previous test. The Snapdragon 88, although has the highest performance, is not power efficient at all. So the devices will consume more power and be hotter. Okay, next up is 3D Mark stress test. This is uh, more of a GPU focused test rather than a comprehensive one like Antutu. So if you play a lot of GPU hungry games, this will be more interesting to you. What? You kidding me? The Mi 11 is actually uh, giving me a warning saying that your device has overheat and uh, I don't know, it just kicked me out of the benchmark. Okay, okay, so the Mi 11 with Snapdragon 888 couldn't even finish the 3D Mark stress test. Uh, after around 18 runs out of 20, it overheated and kicked me out of the benchmark. Notice the battery temperature is 52 degrees. This is crazy. Uh, I'm really shocked by this because I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, let's just uh, let the other two devices finish the test. And uh, I'll get another test for the Xiaomi device to uh, compare the results. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the scores first. So um, if you look at the best loop score, apparently the Karin and the A88 will be better than the A65. But both of them will throttle, especially for the Karin 9000. You see it reduced to only 60% of its peak performance. And after throttle, the performance is actually more or less the same as the Snapdragon 865. The Snapdragon 888 does not throttle as much, it's only uh, 88%, uh, but uh, that's at the expense of extremely high temperatures, which I'm not, I'm really unsure about. But if you look at the Snapdragon 865, it does not throttle at all, right? From the beginning until the end, the performance is 100% the same. And if we look at the more interesting temperature and power data, we see that the Snapdragon 865 actually consumes only 7% of battery, and it has a temperature rise of 12 degrees. While for the Snapdragon 888, it uses 15% of battery. That's more than double that of the Snapdragon 865. All right, all right, I know, I know, the battery capacities are different. All right, I'll do a calculation later and put the exact energy numbers in milliampere hours here so that you can compare them, okay? And the temperature rise for Snapdragon 888 is also a bit ridiculous. It's 19 degrees, right? If you see, just now the test ended when the temperature reaches 52 degrees. So for this, another test, the temperature reached 51 degrees is about only one degree to the threshold where the OS will actually kick me out of the benchmark. So maybe for this particular time, I was lucky I never hit 52. And then if we look at the Karen 9000, it's somewhere in between. 
uh, it's not as hot or power hungry as the Snapdragon 888, but it's still not, not as efficient as the, as the 865. Now we've finished all the tests I want to do, and we have all the data we need, and we can complete our table. And I think most of you can already see exactly what the issue is with Snapdragon 888. The performance is not the issue. You see the four green boxes are all for performance. So it, the performance is amazing, no question there. It's the strongest SoC on any Android phone period. But we also notice that it also has the most red boxes almost for all energy numbers and efficiency numbers the snapdragon 88 is the worst of all this clearly shows that the snapdragon 888 is a terribly inefficient chip well if we look at the snapdragon 865 it's not amazing in terms of performance but it's so good for power efficiency and it beats the Snapdragon 888 and Kyrie 9000 in almost all power efficiency figures. And now Qualcomm, you are telling us that the Snapdragon 888 actually improved the power efficiency by 25% over the 865? And that is the funniest joke I've heard this year. Maybe just keep that joke to yourself, Qualcomm. And then the Kyrie 9000 is somewhere in between the Snapdragon 888 and 865. Its performance is better than the 865, but it, it is also more efficient than the 888. So I think maybe Karen also strikes some balance in between. It's also a pretty good SOC, I'll say. And uh, of course, I also run the spec int for Snapdragon 888, uh, but this is uh, more on the hardcore side. And I've also uh, consolidated the data in this table, some of this, this data is from another friend. So sometimes we do this uh, together because uh, one person cannot have all the devices in the world, right? So we share data with each other and we do the test uh, together. This spec in test is mainly about uh, CPU performance and efficiency. And uh, if you look at it, the Snapdragon 888 uh, of course has the best performance but uh, the power efficiency is not good. Uh, if you compare it to Kyrie 9000 and Snapdragon 865, uh, it's clearly la lacking in terms of uh, efficiency, the perform performance per watt column. And uh, it is even not as good as the Snapdragon 865 Plus, which I already say is a meaningless product. It's a gimmick. It's only for uh, numbers, right? It's not really useful. All right, that's all the tests and data I want to show you today. In conclusion, I think Snapdragon 888 is indeed a failure. We see some healthy improvement in terms of performance, but at the expense of extremely bad power efficiency, which is never a good thing for mobile devices. And it's the false claims from Qualcomm that frustrated me the most. I mean, it's okay if your product is not good, but why would you make false claims and make us believe that it's better, right? It's straight out a lie to say that the 888 is more power efficient than 865 because it's simply not. The numbers do not lie. So for how bad the Snapdragon 888 is, I wouldn't recommend any of you to buy any device with Snapdragon 888 that includes the Mi 11 and the upcoming S21 series. Uh, some people ask me whether this will be fixed by optimization. Um, I'm, I, I won't hold my breath because all the tests we do today are pretty low level stuff. Uh, you can optimize a game, you can optimize certain benchmarks, but you are usually not able to optimize the uh, pure power efficiency. Look at the Exynos 990, uh, it has been one year. Uh, I, I don't see any concrete improvement. Uh, but we are still interested to see uh, when more manufacturers uh, with more devices coming out, how will Snapdragon 888 evolve in the future, right? So uh, stay tuned to my channel and subscribe if you haven't, uh, because I'll always bring the newest stuff to you, okay? Thank you for watching and see you next time.